We've just started our first climb for today. We're going up there. Obviously, it's a bit cloudy at the top. San Salvador, 4.8 kilometers, an average of 6.4%. This will give me a bit of an opportunity to discuss the e-bike motor on this gravel bike. Beautiful. I'll do my best to compare it to my Marla X35 system, but as they work in completely different ways, the direct comparison is a bit difficult. But I'll give it a go and give qualifications where necessary. Right, currently I'm on a 6% climb and I'm going to turn my e-bike motor system off. You may have noticed it's gone quiet. The bike feels very laborious and heavy. It'll take me a few seconds to get used to pedaling at this rate. But I can feel my breathing rate going up and my heart rate 7% and I'm doing about 11 kilometers an hour. Compared to my Orbear gain with the motor off, this feels like much harder work. Okay, I'm gonna put the motor on the lowest level of assist, which is Eco. Right, just done that. You may have heard it kick in and immediately I'm doing a lot less work and my speed's gone up to 15 kilometers an hour. Still on about the same gradient. This to me feels like something between level one and level two on my Marla system. So even at its lowest level, eco, it's quite powerful. In fact, I've been riding most of the hills in eco mode. Right, it's getting slightly steep here, 7%, but I'm still at about 15 kilometers an hour. I'll take it up one level. That's the tour mode. And immediately I feel the thrust of the motor and I can change up into a larger gear. Still at 7%, but now I'm doing 18 kilometers an hour. And again, I'm not really putting that much effort in. This to me would be like full power on the Marla system. Right, when I talk about power, I ought to qualify because it's not really power. It's the level of assist that I feel. The two systems, the Marla X35 system and this system nominally have the same 250 watts of power. But now I'm climbing up this hill, 7%, quite comfortably. That's on tour mode. To be honest, I can't see the point of higher modes, but we'll try them anyway. So if I go up another mode, That's to sport. Again, I can feel an extra thrust and it allows me to change up another gear and I can feel the speed increasing. I'm now doing, coming up for 23 kilometers an hour.
on an eight percent climb and as you can hear I can talk quite normally right I still have one more mode to go and that's turbo oops one of the issues with this system particularly where those switchbacks it can take you into the corners faster than you really need to go so you do have to be careful with it I can imagine that if you have a bike that's fully loaded up with touring equipment, camping gear, etc., perhaps this sport mode could be useful on the steeper climbs. But don't forget, I can down gear the motor just by changing down gear on the bike. In fact, I'll do that now. You listen to the pitch of the motor go up. Okay, I'm leveling off a little bit now. Beautiful climb. Nice road. No potholes. Not too steep. That's from the perspective of having an e-bike, that is. And my Garmin's useful because it's showing me how the road wiggles backwards and forwards. Looks like there's some nice little walking routes there. When you're on these more powerful modes, also when you're coming out of those hairpins, you just want to be a bit careful how much force you put on the pedals. Because I should imagine damp or wet conditions, if you stamp on the pedals, the e-bike system will put the power down and the wheel could spin. Right, still at 8%. This is much more powerful than my Marla system. I'm going to go up to turbo now, which is the highest. And really didn't make that much difference. Although it does allow me to change up an extra gear. What a beautiful ascent. Now I'm going along at 24 kilometers an hour. So basically the e-bike motor is topping out. And there's my brother who I gave a few minutes head start and I'll just whiz past him. Oh, now I just backed off there and the bike just suddenly slowed down. So you have to be careful about how you take the force off the pedals as well as put it on. Effectively, you're using the pedals as a brake and accelerator. Slowing down. Here's another tight bend. Again in turbo mode and I can whip out of that corner if I want to. In fact, I went just above the cutoff speed there, despite being on a 6% climb and the motor just cut out momentarily. So again, 24 kilometers an hour. Now, this is where I have to be careful about using the pedals as an accelerator. I don't know if you can hear the noise of the motor. It's not a great problem. It's certainly much noisier than my Marla X35 system. And if you pedal fast, sounds a bit like a mosquito buzzing in your ear. Oh, so I backed off too quickly there and I suddenly slowed down. Again on those corners it's best to let the cadence drop right down 
because then you don't get that sudden kick from the motor as you come out of the bend. Okay. I'm going to turn this down to sport mode now. Really didn't feel much difference, although the road has flattened off a bit here. Oh, we're only up 4%. But there's a... I'm going to stop on this hairpin and look at the views. Wow, that's lovely. I think the top of this climb is a, at around 500 meters above sea level. And I'm on, coming up for 400 meters now. Here comes my brother. Poor thing has to do all of the work himself. No e-bike for him. But he's doing well. Good cadence. When I have this bike in full acoustic mode, that is the motor turned off, my brother, who you've just seen, goes up these hills at one or two kilometers an hour faster than I do. However, when I put it onto eco mode, I find I can go up the hills one or two kilometers faster than he can. So eco mode really does level the playing field for me. Well, a bit more than leveling. I've turned the bike back down to eco mode. This is the mode I would normally use to climb these sorts of hills. And I'm on 7%. I'm doing a reasonable amount of work, but not excessive amount. I can feel my breathing starting to go up. getting a bit steeper, 8%, 9%. Now I'm feeling that I want to turn this up to tour mode, which I will do. And I get a sudden rush. I'm going to say this e-bike system on here turns me a 90 kilo fairly crappy climber into a good climber, particularly when it's on tour mode, which it's on now. So I'm going up this hill here, currently on 9% and I'm doing about 18 kilometers an hour. I'm not trying too hard. At this rate, I will catch my brother quite quickly. Damp road here. Right. Now, it's quite cloudy today. And as you saw from the bottom of the hill, the top of it is in cloud and now I'm starting to feel quite a lot cooler and as you can see or maybe you can't there's some dampness on the roads I think with this system here if you're riding on wet roads particularly on the more powerful modes, you'd have to be very careful that you don't spin the rear wheel out on some of these bends. Which is why I'm going around them quite gingerly. Gingerly means carefully. As you can hear, I'm not breathing too heavily. 
Bumpy. And my heart rate is currently only at 106 BPM. So this looks like the top. I didn't catch my brother. This is uh, impressive. I expect you can see almost all of the island from here. Let's just jump off and have a look around. I wonder if my brother's gone up there towards the monastery. It would be like him to want to finish off that last couple of meters. My Garmin saying 480 meters. The sign there says 510. Maybe the 510 is up there. Oh, yeah, I can see my brother there. So this is a short, steep piece at the top. And this motor is just dragging me up without too much effort. And my height saying 491 meter. And then my uphill e-bike adventure was over. So we took a look at some of the views, visited the monastery, maybe had a cup of coffee, and took a look at the obelisk. The descent was fabulous, although I had no need for an e-bike. This story is not over though. In a future video, I'll show just how fast this bike is when it's unleashed on another major climb. In a final video, I'll be comparing three bikes and motor systems. This Bosch-powered gravel e-bike from this year, a Fazua-powered road bike that I hired last year, and of course my own Orbea again with its Marla X35 system. I found the technical differences to be easy to understand, but the influence on my riding style was much more complicated. Just like this video, those videos will break my 5 minute rule and be much longer than 5 minutes. If this video was interesting or useful for you, please give it a thumbs up. And if you don't want to miss those future exciting videos, subscribe to my channel. From me, until the next video, it's goodbye.